Hey, this is Lance from Langchain. We're continuing our Langsmith evaluation series, now talking through agent evaluation. Now, this is one of the most requested topics that we've heard. So I want to walk through this carefully, explaining first what an agent actually is and then how to think about evaluating it. And we'll probably walk through the different approaches for evaluation in three different videos. So here's the starting point. What is an agent? There's a great blog post from Lillian Wang that kind of breaks down the core components, tool calling, memory, planning. All right, so that's step one. Now, how to think about what is this thing called tool calling? Here's a really simple explanation of it. All you're doing is you're having an LLM basically return to you the payload of a tool that it can use. Okay, so that's all that's going on. Let's give an example here. I have an LLM. I'm going to define a tool called magic function. And all it does is takes an input and adds two. Okay. So in Langton, we have this nice little decorator called tool and allows you to basically convert this into what we call a structure tool and you can bind it to LLMs that support tool calling. And here's the key point. When you bind it to the LLM, the LLM then given an input. So what is a magic function three? It can recognize, hey, I need to invoke this tool. And here's the key point. This is often the most confusing part. It just returns to you two things, the tool to tool to call and the payload or the arguments to run the tool. Now it doesn't have the ability to magically run that for you, right? Again, it's an LLM, it's string to string, but what it gives you is a tool selection and a payload. That's all you need to really know. That's all that tool calling is. So this could be really anything. This could be a really complex tool. It's a simple tool. That's a key point. You're getting the tool name and the tool arguments out and it's inferring those from the user input. So that's like step one, right? And now agents use this particular tool calling step typically in a loop. So Langgraph is a really nice way to build agents, not the only way, but let me show you an example. Like here's how this whole thing would work. Here's my agent. I've structured, I've structured this in Langgraph. In Langgraph, you have nodes and edges. So I have two different nodes. My first node is my assistant, that's my LLM. It sees my input just like before. It has tools bound and it returns. Remember, all it can return is just like a string in terms of like a raw response or a tool message, which is essentially another string with like, here's the tool I want to use. Here's the tool invocation. We have this, um, we have basically what we call a tools condition node that will automatically look at the LLM response for you and determine is it just a string response out or is it a tool call? And if it's a tool call, then basically all that happens is it takes that tool call payload, it passes it to this other node called the tool node, which basically has our two tools. It looks up the right tool based on the specified name. It passes the specified input to the tool and you get the tool response out. And we send that back to the LLM. Now this keeps running until the LLM has decided, okay, I'm not gonna call a tool anymore. I'm just gonna respond directly. And then the tool conditions node just returns. So in this particular case, let's walk through it. One loop, what's magic function three? LLM says, okay, that looks like a tool call. I need to use my tool magic function. Returns the tool call with the magic function name and the argument. Tool node gets that. Tool node says, okay, run magic function. Runs it with this input three. You get the result five out. It passes that back to the LLM as a tool message. Hey, the tool output is five. LLM looks at that and says, okay, returns the string. The result is five. That's all that happens. Super, super simple, basic agent explanation, right? So here's the interesting thing. How do you think about evaluating this thing? Well, here's like the way we've broken it down. This is our conceptual guide. And um, there's like kind of three different really intuitive ways to think about this. First is final response. This is just like end to end. Is it doing what we wanted to do? So in this case, the final response would be like looking at, does it return five? I don't care how many loops it goes through, does it return five? And you know, if you think about it, that's just a string to string comparison typically. We can use existing evaluators that we use for RAG, answer response, easy stuff, right? So you're just looking at end-to-end -end response. You don't care anything about the agent process, okay? So that's kind of like one way to do it. Now, another way to do evaluation is like digging in a little bit, like looking at a single step of the agent. Like here's a good example. If I pass this input, does it actually like, in, you know, want to, does it does actually invoke the right tool? Does it like make the right decision? So for this, my output would be like my evaluation output. We'll talk about this in detail later. Will be like the tool name. Okay, so you could just evaluate that. You could say, okay, if I have this prompt, I expect this tool to be called, and just do an evaluation there. So that's like evaluating one step of an agent, right? 
And then you can also think about doing kind of the same idea, but for many steps. And so let's say this is a more complex agent. It has to invoke like both of these tools, right? You could have your reference be like, you know, fun magic function, then web search, okay? Um, and, um, you know, and then in case your evaluation would basically look for, there's a couple ways you could do custom evaluator there. You could look at the exact sequence of tool calls. You could look at any sequence of tool calls. You could look at like, you know, if it's close, count it, you know, better versus far in terms of like the trajectory taken. Anyway, we'll talk about all that later, but the intuition is simply evaluating a whole selection of different tool calls. So again, evaluate final response, evaluate a single tool call, or evaluate many tool calls. That's like the simple minor way to think about at least three ways to look at agent evaluation. Now let's go ahead after that preamble, let's go to the first one. So here's a notebook, I've, I've defined an agent. Um, so I'm using this Chinook DB. This is a popular SQL database. Um, and so I'm gonna build a SQL agent. Okay, it's gonna be using Chinook DB. Um, here's like the flow. Again, it looks exactly like we just saw, except in this case, my tool is SQL database. Um, so here's where I'm just basically gonna pull in. Uh, this is our existing SQL toolkit. This is a whole bunch of SQL tools for working with SQL databases. I'm gonna find one or two custom tools. It's like check query tool. This is gonna basically check if the query is correct. Um, I'm gonna add one other like check result tool. This will check if like the result from DB is like not empty. Does it make sense? So anyway, there we go. I, I've defined some tools. Now with LangGraph, you define agent state. And um, if you want more details on LangGraph, I'm gonna link a few videos to talk all about LangGraph agents. That's kind of outside the scope of here, but this is assuming you kind of know how to build an agent, okay? Cause you're doing evaluation. So this is my agent state. Now here is just where I'm like basically defining my agent, what you might call the agent runnable or agent assistant. This is basically my SQL prompt, okay? So this is basically telling the, telling the agent what you're gonna do. Yeah, uh, you're you know you're going to be interacting with SQL database. You're going to be you know querying it, looking at the response, uh, and then answering you know answering the user question. And again, this is a whole bunch of detail. I'll, you can read the notebook independently. Um, a couple graph utilities. Don't worry too much about this. Um, and boom, let's look at our graph. Cool. So here's our agent graph, just like we saw before. And again, this is just like a you know a line graph representation. Of what we actually showed over here. Uh, this is exactly the same thing. I have an assistant node, I have a tool node. I bounce between the tool and a loop until basically the assistant returns a string saying, here's my answer. That's all that we're doing, simple. Uh, okay, so here's a couple different questions. Um, let's just make sure I can invoke this thing and that it actually works. Um, and my config is not defined. Um, let's see, yep. So we're gonna go ahead and need to pull that up here. Boom, let's try that and that'll work, cool. Uh, so we can see that our agent is running and it is running. There we go. So we get an answer and that's fine. So the agent works. Okay, cool. And we can also stream outputs, um, but let's not worry about that for now. Let's move on to the eval piece. So now we have an agent, we build in line graph, we know it works, cool. Now let's talk through the response eval. Again, this is looking at the output or response of our agent, no problem. So first things first, let's build a data set, just like we've done a million times. Um, I'm gonna go op op open up Langsmith, boom. And let's log in here. Nice. All right, very good. Let's go ahead and open up. Let's make sure I'm in the right tenant. So I'm in my Langchain tenant. Let's look at data set. So actually, I've actually cre already created this data, so I don't wanna create it again, but I'll just show you what it looks like. SQL agent response, there's my data set. Here are my examples. So basically input output pairs, just like we've seen in the past, right? Uh, question, answer, just like for rag eval, same thing. But in this case, we need when agents can be doing all the work under the hood. But again, our evaluation approach can follow exactly what we've done with rag in the past, right? Here's our examples. So we created a data set with input output pairs, question, answer. Now these answers, of course, come from our SQL database. So we need an agent to again interact with the database and uh, do all the work for us. So we're just gonna find a chain. This is basically just gonna invoke our graph with an example from our data set. So again, if you go look at our data set, the data set is keyed with our inputs, or this key input. So again, we grab our example, key input, that'll return basically the question, plumb that into our agent. No problem, easy. Now, okay, now here's what's interesting. Our evaluator, this is just like we did in the past for RAG. Same thing, we're gonna be doing a string-to-string -string comparison between a reference answer and our agent answer. 
So this is literally the same thing we've done in the past. Now we kick off our eval. So again, let's, let's look at what we're passing. We're passing in our little function here. That's basically just gonna run our agent on each input. Okay, so that's that. Uh, our data set we defined, our evaluator we defined right here. This is the same as basically a rag evaluator. You know, it's gonna look at our reference answer relative to our agent answer. Cool, so we kick off evaluation here. Um, that runs, we can go over and look. So I can go ahead and actually just, I'll just show you where I am. So I'm in my, uh, our data set that's defined here. I look at my most recent experiment, so here we are. So again, we've kind of seen this before. Uh, this is basically a, you know, one zero, is the answer correct or not scoring? Um, we can actually just look at some of these runs and kind of break them out. Um, so, you know, reference output Led Zeppelin has 14 albums, the RSL Zeppelin has 14 albums. So this is obviously correct, that's great. We can look at some that are incorrect. Uh, the most purchased uh, track of 2013 was Hot Girl, um, and this has some issue. This is probably a problem with the query. So again, this is one we could dig into. Um, and you can look through accordingly. So in any case, this is like the, the simplest type of evaluation you might think of. It's, it's actually the same as other types like RAG evaluation we've already talked about, where you're basically comparing the output or what's returned by the agent to a reference, and you don't care anything about what's happening under the hood, okay? So this is just like an example of end-to-end -end eval on a simple test case on a SQL agent. Uh, I'm just gonna extend our uh, response evaluation slightly here. So initially, remember our agent looks like this. We start, it goes to the assistant node, the assistant picks one of several tools to use, the tool is invoked, we go back, we continue that in a loop until we finish, right? Now, when we talk about laying out agents, you can also sometimes think about laying out those steps you want the agent to take or those tool nodes, to those tool calls, very explicitly as independent nodes. So here's actually a separate SQL agent that we've kind of just devised, just kind of hacking on it a little bit. And what we do here is, instead of running this uh, kind of just as a simple loop, where the assistant kind of makes the decision at each step as to which tool to use, we encode the path of tools that we want the agent to use very explicitly. And so basically it follows what we did previously. Your first tool call, which is basically list tables, you get the schema, um, you generate a query, you, you check the query for correctness, you execute it and you go back. And if there's an error in execution, then you try again. So it's the same kind of idea, except we're just making it a little bit more specific. So what's cool is with our now eval set defined, I can actually go and I've just run this notebook and this is checked in. I'll of course share the link here, a bunch of code. This is again showing the the, um, the kind of flow of the agent. Um, we went ahead and ran response evaluation on that same eval set. Um, again, this is kind of the same eval we just went through with our updated agent. So we can kick off evaluation here. I'm just gonna name this evaluation SQL agent multi-step response. Um, so that runs and we can go over to line graph. We can look at our data set. We can see here's our two experiments. This is our initial agent. It got around 53% correct. I ran three repetitions. Um, and we can see that our newer agent, SQL uh, agent multi-step response gets around 67% again across the three repetitions. So this is pretty cool. We can open this up. We can go to comparison view. Um, and this is great. So we can actually see, you know, we do uh, two improvements and one regression relative to the baseline, the baseline being our initial model and our, uh, what we're comparing is of course the multi-step agent. So in any case, good example of how you can, um, you know, use evaluation to compare different agent architectures. And in this particular case, you can see that a slightly more uh, explicit architecture does a little bit better on our eval set. Thanks.